We all have something that's been worn down over the years. Might be a keychain you've had forever, maybe an old pair of shoes, or a long-suffering partner who's done with your crap. Well, that last one aside, there's something oddly satisfying about seeing the toll that time has taken on everyday items. From tattoos to trees, it's time to take a look at even more things that have been changed through the power of time. So, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, aka the CDC, if you use a manual toothbrush to clean your teeth, you should replace it once every three to four months. If you don't, you could end up in Reddit user Hector Delar's situation. That's a one-day-old toothbrush versus a one-year-old one. Hang on, this guy really went a whole year without changing his toothbrush? Ugh, those woefully worn-down bristles don't look like they could clean a shoe, let alone a mouth. Oh God, makes my teeth itch. Is there anywhere more magical on Earth than Disney World in Orlando, Florida, a place that has welcomed an average of 58 million visitors per year since it opened way back in 1971? For more than 50 years, eager kids and adults have lined up along roped walkways to each new and exciting attraction. And over time, the rope clips have gradually worn down a few hooks in the resort, like this one. It's been clipped on and off there so many times, it's worn another groove into the hook. Well, if you change that clip's angle, in another 50 years, maybe the hook will be sporting its own pair of Mickey ears. Waves are hypnotic to watch from the shore of a lake or ocean, but as pretty and harmless as they look, over time, they can have some pretty powerful effects on the shoreline. Ones that the residents living on the edge of Green Bay in Wisconsin know all too well. Whoa, the waves wore the entire shoreline back and took a huge chunk out of it right here. This is a process called shore erosion, where the power of the waves gradually wears down the land on the shore, posing major risks to many beachfront developments and infrastructure. Now, this footage in particular may look like several years of wear, but shockingly, this time lapse was taken over just one hour in stormy weather. Man, I hope those Green Bay residents don't have long left on their mortgages. Now, it's not just shorelines that can wear away unexpectedly quickly. Your mom probably told you that tattoos are permanent, so if you get one, it should really mean something to you, as it's going to be on your body forever. You don't want to be embarrassed 10 years from now for sporting a super cliché dandelion being blown into bird's tat, or an ex's name so large it's impossible to cover up. But not all tats last forever. Just take a look at this. So this is the same tat on the same guy's hand, but how long do you think the two photos were taken apart? It must be a few years, maybe even decades, right? Try a mere two and a half months on Versailles. You see, our hands, especially the palms and fingers, experience a great deal of friction as we use them a lot. The skin cells here wear down and are replaced quickly gradually revealing and fading the ink of the tattoo that's injected beneath. So palm tattoos don't last forever, which is good news for people like Ariana Grande who got a Japanese typo tattooed on her palm back in 2019. Hope that wears off quickly, bestie. Thank you, next. You know what won't wear down no matter how much you use them though? Those like and subscribe buttons down below. All done? Nice. All right, what do we got next? Now, it can take just a few years for a city skyline to become unrecognizable, with older establishments constantly being knocked down to make room for newer and bigger buildings. But while the original structures may have been demolished, some leave their mark on a new landscape, like the buildings that once lined this street in Montreal. The bricks of the previous buildings, and even their extensions and developments, had been worked into the adjoining building, leaving a brick-filled outline. This isn't something unique to old Montreal, though. Over in New York, which went through a development boom in the early 2000s, the ghosts of older buildings can be seen across the city. Have you ever heard of the Shaolin Monastery in Henan, China? 
It's renowned for its kung fu fighting Shaolin monks, who train relentlessly from young ages to achieve amazing feats of strength, pain endurance, and power. But one area they exercise oddly mercilessly is their fingers. To produce large bursts of strength from a single blow, they train by hitting planks of wood and trees with individual fingers. Over time, their fingers are strengthened to the point where they can do push-ups on them, balance on them, and even break coconuts open with just one. That's a feat that takes around 200 pounds of force, which is similar to a boxing jab, all delivered through a single finger. Over the years, this strengthens the fingers but wears down holes in the trees they use until they end up with hundreds of holes peppered all over them. Well, if they can wear down holes into trees with their fingers, I bet these guys can deliver some seriously fatal flicks. If you've got a green thumb, you probably own at least one weeding knife. These are heavy-duty gardening implements designed to cut straight through the earth, including the tough roots of weeds plaguing your petunias. But depending on how avidly you tend your garden, the roots can take their toll on these knives, as Reddit user Aid Le Sultan discovered. A good fifth of his old knife had been worn away, to the point where that serrated edge is more of a bumpy suggestion. Compared to the new one, the old knife doesn't look like it could cut through butter, let alone roots. While I was searching for more impressive examples of the power of time, I stumbled across a cool-looking image. Uploaded to Reddit some seven years ago, it shows a nail that's been slowly dragged down through a wall by that heavy stone Mayan calendar it's holding up. At first, I just thought it was a cool picture. But the comment section beneath was full of keyboard warriors debating the truth of its origins. They argued this didn't show the passage of time at all, because the nail would have bent, not been dragged through the wall. Others suggested the poster had carved a fake line into the wood above the nail, and posted the fake photo for Reddit clout. While others, I kid you not, mocked up simulations of exactly how the nail could have dragged through the wall without bending. Man, Reddit nerds are something else, aren't they? Think it might be time to go outside and touch some grass, my dudes. While the original poster never revealed anything more about the nail in question, I'm inclined to believe that the nail was hammered in at an upward angle and has been dragged down over time. Otherwise, this might be the weirdest thing anyone on the internet has ever lied about. Man, I love a game of pool. I mean, I'm terrible at it, but so are most people who claim to love pool. And while you gotta keep your eyes on the balls, I think if I was playing a game in this bar, I'd have a problem tearing my eyes away from this wall. Over the years, plenty of avid players have placed the cues back and scraped them against the wall, leaving a set of telltale chalk-stained oval prints worn into it. Well, even though I couldn't hit a ball on the table, it's nice to know I wouldn't have much of a problem hitting this wall. When you wash your hands, do you instinctively reach for the hot or the cold handle? Me, I go cold, but apparently I'm not like the majority of people who all reach for the hot tap. If this basin from Santa Fe, New Mexico is anything to judge by, the brass handle on the left has been touched so regularly that it's worn the oxidized top layer of grime off in contrast to the handle on the right. Now, considering there's no clear hot and cold labels, maybe it's just a force of habit to go for the left handle, in which case the Santa Fe population might just be made up of an oddly high number of lefties. Is there any greater pain in the world than having a bike pedal hit you in the shin? Ugh. Gets you right in the soul every time. With that said, I think we can all take a look at this scene and be thankful it's not our shins in place of this lamppost. Years and years of cyclists leaning their bikes up against it has left thousands of pedal scratch marks in the paint, none of which go above this point, giving it a clearly scratched divide. It's a really cool visual effect, or would be if I could stop imagining my shin in its place. Youch. Most of us know at least one person who lives in a house that doesn't have locks built into the doors. Instead, they rely on old hook and eye locks, the hooks of which swing around freely 360 degrees against the door. 
Even for those people who know what I'm talking about all too well, the wear a hook can do to a door, and even a door frame like this, is pretty cool to see. This is the bathroom from a rice mill that's been in business since 1880, and since it was installed, thousands of visitors have flipped the hook round, gradually wearing a near-perfect circle into the wood of the door. I can't be the only one who finds this weirdly satisfying, right? If this image scratches an itch you didn't know you had, let me know down in the comments below. Now, I have a big butt, and I cannot lie, I've split pants, broken chairs, you name it, my butt's done it. In fact, it looks like I might have used this chair at some point in my life. Either this cheeky set of grooves was caused by one very, very avid chair wiggler, or it's an old sturdy chair that's had those two grooves worn into it by hundreds of butts over the years. I'm tempted by the latter explanation because you can also see the slight wear of the thighs as well. I mean, I hope it's thighs, unless there's someone out there with uh, a part of their undercarriage just as big as their butt. While many people, like me, are blessed with slightly bigger parts genetically, some of our other body parts can get bigger with age. And before all the creeps start bombarding the comment section, no, it's not your wiener. If you've paid attention to any of the previous parts of the series, you'll know that I'm talking about your hands. Over the years, they can slowly get larger thanks to the onset of age-associated conditions like arthritis, or plain and simple weight gain. And that becomes all too real when you try to remove something you've been wearing on your hands for years like a wedding band. Reddit user Isle Cook found this out when they tried to remove the band they'd been wearing for more than 40 years. It was stuck so well that no amount of lubrication would remove it, so they eventually had to resort to cutting it off. It was so tight, and with the skin having lost elasticity naturally over time, it left a perfect imprint pinched around the finger. I guess you could say this marriage made a long-lasting impression. They say the foundations of a long and happy marriage are love, work, and compromise. But cake is also an important cornerstone. If these two pictures of Reddit user Max Hawk's grandparents are anything to go by. Recreating the iconic wedding day photo on the left more than 60 years later, you can tell this marriage was full of years of fun, can't you? That and plenty of cake, I imagine. A lot can change in 10 years. Clothes, technology, even people can become unrecognizable. But there are some things that stay the same, like the love between a man and his dog. Even though 10 years had passed and his dog had gotten a whole lot bigger, Reddit user Gordon Dell was able to recreate this old photo down to the clothes he was wearing. Same background, same sweater, same dog. And look, both of them have even gotten hairier with time too. What a shot. Watching wax drip down the side of a candle has such a calming, nostalgic feel to it, doesn't it? Plus, there's something satisfying about touching the wax and then peeling it off your hand once it sets. Although I don't imagine it'd be half as satisfying as cracking the wax off the base of this very well-used candle holder. Hundreds of candles have been placed in the top of it, gradually burning and melting for hour after hour, producing a slowly growing mound of wax strips that's left it looking like a pile of forbidden spaghetti. Snails are a notoriously slow species, but while many of them start out small from the eggs they hatch from, they can grow at a surprisingly fast rate. And there's no better snail species that demonstrates this quite like the African giant snail. In just one year, these snails grow in weight from a few grams to a gargantuan 500 grams on average, although they can get much bigger with the record for the heaviest African giant snail coming in at a hefty 900 grams. As land snails like these grow, the aperture of their shell gradually accumulates more and more calcium carbonate, which the snail secretes from glands on its body. So as its main body grows, the shell gets larger to accommodate it, twisting around in that super cool spiral pattern. In this time, their shells get larger and larger, just like this guy's did, growing from just one and a half inches to a huge six and a half inches in only a year. I guess these guys only move at a snail's pace. 
If you live or work in an apartment building, you'll know the pain of having to climb up and down stairs. Now, I, not being a total masochist, take the elevator whenever I can. But even in buildings with elevators, a lot of people who clearly love fitness and pain take the stairs, as evidenced by this incredible example of wear and tear. Out of all that landing space, just two tiny patches of floor have been worn down, showing the exact spot where hundreds of people have repeatedly pivoted round. Wait, could this be the floor of the stairwell from that Friends episode? You know the one I'm talking about. Pivot! Pivot! Ha, <laughs> pivot! Gets me every time. There's an old American saying that goes, put your best foot forward, which I always thought was just a nice old proverb. But it turns out people do put their best foot forward. And it's usually their right foot, if this shop floor in Ireland is anything to go by. Years of customers standing at the counter being served has disproportionately worn this spot in the floor through, with the two most stood-on points being eroded right down. And speaking of spots on the floor that have worn straight through, I think we can all tell that this photo was taken in the men's room. Either that or when women do their business, they sit with their feet much farther forward than I ever thought. I hate the gym. There, I said it. I hate the music, the lights, but most of all, I hate seeing people lifting weights. They all seem to be doing so much better than me. However, maybe if I saw more of the wear and tear that's on this weight machine, I wouldn't feel so self-conscious. Over time, everyone's had a pop at the lighter set of weights, and really gone to town on the 50-pound set. But few rarely make it past 130 pounds. Man, that 200-pound bar looks tragically underused. And suddenly I feel much better about my own weak workout motivation. Do you keep mementos? You know, little trinkets to remember something special by? Well, Reddit user B.D. Watson 1965's grandfather certainly did. In 1945, he and his wife moved from Texas to California, stopping at Las Vegas to gamble for a few hours. They kept two silver dollars from the trip. B.D. Watson's grandmother kept hers in her purse, but his grandfather kept his in his pocket. Eventually, both coins were handed down to him but their states couldn't have been more different. 63 years of being rubbed and touched in his grandfather's pocket had left one of the dollars smooth and worn down. His grandmother's, on the other hand, was in almost pristine condition. Carrying on the tradition, B.D. Watson apparently keeps the worn dollar in his pocket and will one day pass it on to his son. By that point, I reckon that dollar might be worn down to a dime. On the topic of family heirlooms, Reddit user Alta1971 claimed they were given a fourth-generation mixing spoon once used by their great-grandparents. Except this thing looks like it's been used to mix acid. Where the heck is the rest of it? Well, rumor has it Alta's grandmother's specialty was meringues and whipped cream, and so Alta assumed that millions of trips around the mixing bowl is what worn it down. Now, whipping cream with a hand mixer is hard, but with a spoon, even more so. That said, I'm not sure I believe it's been worn down from whipping cream, especially since it resembles the shape of a roux spoon. These are specially designed to get right into the edges of the pan, to stop the flour and oil used in making a roux burn. Still, I like the idea of someone whipping cream so often and aggressively, they wear down their metal spoon. Looks like the secret ingredient here was elbow grease. The way most companies produce furniture is pretty straightforward. Grow trees for between 40 to 150 years, chop them down, cut them into pieces, make a chair. When you think about it, that's a lot of steps just to sit down. But back in 2007, Alice and Gavin Monroe began thinking, what if they could grow chairs instead? Trees start out as small, flexible saplings, which can be bent and manipulated into different shapes to fit their environment. So what if they encourage their trees into chair shapes? It was such a unique idea, they just had to try it. And so they planted a few willow saplings over a small plot of land and began training their shape using a series of wire frames. Using four saplings as the legs, which wound up the frame, they predicted their method would take less than five years to literally grow a chair. 
By 2010, the saplings had finally started to take chair shape, and in 2011, their first prototype was ready. Since then, their operation has expanded, and now they use specialized plastic molds to train a single tree into shape, instead of four saplings, which proved tough to grow into one cohesive object. By 2016, the first chairs grown from a single sapling were ready, and all it took was almost 10 years of time. Still, that's a fraction of the time it takes to grow one regular tree. But Alice and Gavin aren't the only people looking to harness the power of this tree-chair-growing method. Back in 1987, Peter Cook and Becky Northey became inspired to train plants into strange and different shapes for the purposes of art using their own homegrown method called Pook Tree. Using wire frames similar to Alice and Gavin, over the years they trained trees into incredibly intricate shapes like people, peace signs, and furniture. And obviously, they also tried their hand at training a tree into a living chair. The chair alone took seven years to grow and form, but ended up so sturdy and stable that Peter can happily hang out in it. What a seat! I mean, feet! Have you ever been on holiday and gone to buy a souvenir from one of those weird little gift shops? You know, the ones that smell like soap and candles, that sell t-shirts that have weird phrases on them, and that all have floors like this? Whoa. So many tourists have visited this souvenir shop in Hilton Head Island over the years that you can see exactly which aisles most of them have stepped foot in. Looks like a lot of people don't make it to the far end. Or they see those weird bikini bottle openers and decide to turn around and leave. I wouldn't blame them. But it's not just souvenir shops that have telltale worn down floors. Over in one of the changing rooms of clothing store chain Forever 21, you can tell exactly where most customers stand and pose to get the best view of themselves in the mirror. Seeing how many people use those cubicles daily, I'm surprised they don't use a longer-lasting flooring solution over a thin layer of paint on some bare floorboards. Well, I guess it's on brand for their floors to wear out as quickly as their clothes. We all have that one pair of shoes that looks like they've been worn to hell and back. You know the ones I'm talking about, with the heel worn down, holes in the sole, probably a completely different color than when you bought them, right? But what about a different size than when you bought them, like these old and new Doc Martin boots apparently are? Yeah, the boot on the left is new, but the one on the right's been worn for more than four and a half years. Not only has the tread been completely worn away, but if these are the same model of shoe, as Reddit user prone to wander claims they are, they also appear to have dropped like three sizes. Now, feet don't usually shrink with age, so what's happened here? It's more than likely that this photo was just taken at an odd angle. Whew. For a second there, I thought that my feet might not be the only thing that shrinks as I get older. Do you have any footage or photos of worn down items that you own that you want to share? If you send them over to me at stories at you might make it into the next part of this series. Until then, thanks for watching.